Hi everyone. This video is about critical reading for all my students. But you don't need to believe what I say. I mean, if you look at the topic critical reading, critical is an English word. Reading is just reading. So, so what's there? There's nothing much. But when you get together, it's, it's just critical reading. It's, it's the reading that we do everywhere. Okay, some, of, some might think that way. But others might think, oh, she is using this topic. There must be something meaningful, right? Now, we are going to have a debate here. One side is who one side is who believe that critical reading is the most important element in learning, right? Learning can be done not just reading, listening, and number of other activities are there. But let's get one by one. This time it's critical reading, right? So you don't need to trust me because there is no why do you trust me? I said it doesn't make any sense. You can leave it. Similarly, you might think maybe critical reading is totally irrelevant. That's fine. So I'm going to get the side where critical reading is necessary to enhance our learning and understand. Right? You may find no, it is irrelevant. That's all good. So what I'm going to do is we are going to debate this topic. Right? So get ready. So in my case. To convince my arguments, I'm going to bring evidence from research. This research is done in Australia by universities as well as Australian Council for Educational Research. And some other research I'm bringing, they are from universities in the globe. So the research meaning some people have done the, this, this, this research, meaning carrying out these experiments and then to prove a case, right? So these are generally academics, the university lecturers, professors, those who are having masters and PhD degrees, right? So if you are going to do a research to say that critical reading is totally irrelevant in the 21st century, I'm more than happy to accept that. Please carry out your research, do it in reality, find out a target group, and set the questionnaire, and then analyze the questionnaire, then read what other researchers say, and then come to your conclusion and say, Ramya, I did the research and I found this critical reading is totally relevant. Absolute, there's absolutely no meaning. You don't need to waste your time. Okay, that's all fine, and I'm happy to accept that. And remember that when I'm bringing my arguments, I use my Reasoning power, the logic, right? And I'll make sure that there are less fallacies in my arguments. The puzzle is really nicely fitting together. But you can do the same thing, right? And let's see where we are heading, okay? So are you ready now? So in this topic, I have to bring my arguments. So I have to have a starting point. I read a lot of material. But do you believe that I couldn't find a definition for critical reading? Because different resources saying different things, they are not the same. So, so now I thought myself, why do I struggle this much to find a definition? In the end, I gave up because I couldn't find a definition. But when I was reading material, I found there was a connection between critical thinking and critical reading. That's one thing I found. So I was writing notes of my findings. Then the next one was critical writing. So certain information was telling that it is related to this, this, this taxonomy called Bloom's. I'll tell you what it is, don't worry. And then AQF level five, that is Australian Qualification Framework level five for diploma, that's a diploma and also employable skills. So it was very interesting, although I did not have a definition to start with. So then what I did, I wanted to find out this definition without that I'm not getting anywhere. So to do that, I need to find some reliable sources. What are reliable sources? Do you think I could go to community newspaper and read it or news, uh, Australian Herald or Age? Doesn't make sense. Can I read Wikipedia? No. So then I thought, okay, the reliable 
resources should be some academics done research, some, you know, some credible institutions. Th that's where I should be searching. And by doing so, it also, you know, it took some time. I found some research papers. These were published by Australian Council for Education Research and some universities in Australia, as well as universities around the globe. Then I felt a little better, right? So I thought of letting you know my research method, the research method to find a definition. Because whatever we do, we need to make sure the information that we bring is fair. It's not biased. Biased meaning it's not for my personal advantage. It is something that anyone could believe in. And that is why we are making, you know, we are making it free of bias. Right? So my search method, let's see what I did. So the first step was I jumped into Google and typed critical reading definition in the search box, pressed enter. And then what happened was I, I decided the first three sources I'll be using, nothing more. So the fourth one was Wikipedia. Obviously, I left it. Then the first source directly going to a website called criticalreading.com, which has a lot of interpretations. And the, I, this is very detailed. But only problem was it's a little old. It's something some 2000 and uh, not 10, uh, 2012, 13, 15, little older than that. The next website was a university, Massey University, that was updated website. So it was talking about what this critical reading is. Then the third website was a university in the UK. They were highlighting what critical reading means, characteristic features. Now, after reading this and some of the information I collected, I thought, okay, that's fine. I can now have some idea. Now, this is really broad topic. Then I thought, Right, under this topic, to bring my argument, I have to find out subtopics and then dig the subtopics one at a time in detail to get the big picture, right? To do that, I thought, the, what could I use? So again, I thought, okay, before drawing any diagram of what areas I have to address, I thought I need to see, remember I told you, earlier that critical reading has connection to critical thinking and critical writing so i thought it's better to have a video clip of you know just explaining what this critical reading is so to do that i have written this uh, video clips uh, uh, uniform resource locator meaning the web link please watch that because if i get it there Sometimes a video, this is a video, and video within the video will reduce the quality of the original video. So to avoid that, please watch. But I thought of writing these three items. One is critical reading, which is connected to critical thinking and critical writing. The, these arrows are pointing to one direction. There is a target, to get, you know, the, the target. You need to find out what the target is. And I found all these three are three have this these common features they involved in analyzing evaluating and identify accuracy or fallacies whether it is correct or wrong what the arguments whether the arguments of facts or opinions whether they are correct or wrong why do we need to make decisions that means to make decisions that's a big concept we make decisions in our personal life as well as our professional life so you will get advantage in both areas if critical reading is important we still don't know because there is a debate here okay now the next what i did was i wanted to find out after reading all of them how do i going to convince my students this this these are the elements this is why it is important so i thought let me use the mind map mind map will tell me to you know what what areas so what i did i got a powerpoint slide and I got a little, you know, structure at the center, this little star. So I wrote critical reading or active reading. I can use the word active because critical reading, another word is active reading. Right? Then I thought I need to start from a definition. Oops, I don't have a definition. I leave it there. Then what area should I consider? And what are the reliable sources? And how do I identify critical readers from non-critical readers? Then 
what reading level is required for students who are uh, preparing for diplomas and higher degrees, higher diplomas, higher degrees. That is Australian qualification framework uh, is need to be brought in. Also, it says you know, language literacy and numeracy needs are also hidden there. So I need to look at that. And so there is another important thing is Australian core skills framework also says where the standards are. So that's a tough end, right? Then I thought, like, what are the employable skills? I found this from different websites. Then another area was how could we distinguish critical readers from non-critical readers? So we need more solid evidence initially identifying, but now we need much more solid evidence to distinguish them. Hey, one group, you are going to group. That group, non-critical readers. This group, critical readers, right? Must be solid evidence. Then what is this process of critical reading? What's happening in reality? Then how, what, are, what, what strategies can be used to improve critical reading? Then um, do we need this critical reading, citing text evidence? When, when you read something, you have to have a note saying, I got this information from that source. That's called citing. So that's also important, why? Then we can tell somebody, I got this from that side. I got this from the other side. I got this from the third side. These two are similar. That one is different, but this one is that. But in the end, you have to weigh and see which side you are going to get. Then I thought I need to bring research findings. So those are Australian Council for Educational Research, Australian context as well as the global context. So when I drew this thing, I, well, there was this, I felt better, right? So then I thought the first thing I'm going to say is active readers, critical readers, another name is active readers. Active, the opposite is passive. So non-critical readers are called passive readers. So the resources that I read clearly says, at, uh, passive readers, meaning those who do not believe in reading, right? They read all information in the same way. They read in the morning, maybe 10, 15 pages or so they read and they stop. The following day also read and stop. But the active readers, what they do is, they, they decide different strategies. Meaning, if it is uh, uh, um, some digital information or PDF, they'll highlight different areas. They'll write little notes. They'll change the time. Maybe they will record their voice by reading and then listen to that. These are different reading strategies. Then that's the first difference. The second difference is the passive reader, non-critical reader may not be able to remember anything, right? And the evidence, if they ask what, what, what sequence the information that is flowing, they may not be able to tell because the brain is not fully active. But when it comes to active readers, they read, they take pencil in hand or highlighting areas on screen, sentences, using computer or writing notes, making key vocabulary or some clue, you know, cue cards, that activities, right? Actively engaging with reading material. That's why active readers. That's the difference. Then I found another difference is this information. Yeah, this is another difference is Reading because it was assigned by the lecturer, trainer, or the, the person taking that subject, right? And that's why reading. But active reader thing is, you know, that there is a purpose of reading. I need to read it, I need to analyze, I need to find out why I'm reading it, right? What is the purpose? So asking questions constantly. Now the difference of, uh, non-active reader or the passive reader is read any number of pages it doesn't matter but in the end will come up and say I don't understand right because the brain is not involved but active readers what they do is they adjust their speed sometimes when they're tired they won't read sometimes they write little explanations of you know what are the objectives objective meaning what's the purpose of reading this material so they are jotting down the objectives Right, they are writing in their own words what what was read. That's another difference. Then, fifth difference was for non-active readers, or we call it passive readers or non-critical readers. 
they are they are checking the length of information how long this is it how is this assignment four or five pages long and then start reading because it's matter of am i going to finish this reading but active reader is not reading the beginning and then skimming the introduction quickly getting through introduction reading headings and reading conclusions to get a brief idea that's how it starts the next difference is reading until this is done by the non-critical reader the passive reader reading until the section is completed just finishing target is to finish but what active reader is doing is using little symbols time to time drawing mind maps to understand what was read writing questions thus activities then i found the seventh difference is at the the, the non-critical reader whatever they read they believe that's right that's 100 percent they believe accept everything what they read but the critical reader questions the ideas is this right can i rely on that is it a reliable source does it make sense we're not questioning constantly then the other the, the final difference is the non-critical reader it's following the routing, follow routing standard methods. That's every day, right? Reading the same method, regardless of whether it can be understood or not. But active reader, the, what, what active reader does is, again, summarizing, recording, drawing, writing questions, asking further questions, researching websites for further information this comparison was found in fantastic source i wrote it there where i got it and this is longman publications it's clearly highlighting the differences between these two when i read that i felt there must be some truth in it right right now why do we need to read critically there must be these are objectives here the one this one is diploma standards right Australian qualification frameworks diploma standards. So you need to know what are these level five diploma standards are. I had given you the website and I'm going to take you there now. So when you get here, you will find it clearly says what standards are required from these diploma holders. And here it is level one. We need to click level five so you get it it says here clearly analyze information so you got it i was using the word analysis it says provide and transmit solutions to complex problems not small ones complex big ones and so transmit information and skills to others transmission that means information is flowing that means you have to tell it in a way the, to readers to understand it also says application of knowledge and skills. Here it says skills to demonstrate autonomy, judgment. Judgment is a big one. Judgment comes from evaluation, right? Autonomy is standing by own, right? So individual learner. So that shows how challenging this topic is. Okay. Right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get into my next objective. That is employable skills as stated in the Australian Qualification Framework Standard site. Then the next one is this is Australian Core Skills Framework levels. So that is interesting, I felt, because the this uh, AC, Australian Core Skills Framework is showing you these are the things. What it says is level one, working with an expert or a mentor. This is what when students say we don't understand, we get one on one and explaining, right? This is asking help. Number two is asking help for some areas. Number three is work independently and uses own familiar support, right? Number four is work independently and initiates and uses support from a range of established resources. In fact, I, at, at a later stage, I found those level five diploma holders are starting from number four, not number one, two, three. So now you know this is a serious business. Okay. Right. And then it didn't end. I also wanted to find out 
what what is the reading level required because i'm asking these questions i've been very inquisitive because if not how do i convince you what is what critical reading is so i did further research and i went to this site australian core skills framework uh, performance three domains so this is the document which says clearly what is required in this australian core skills framework right so the link is there. The next objective is language literacy and numeracy requirement because when it comes to language, it's one element, reading, writing, and understand. So reading is necessary. So, and I also wanted to find out up to what level do they need this reading? So I went to this ACER, Australian Council for Educational Research site, a different link this time which gives me little more details. And I thought, okay, I need to know what it is. That says here, reading. Under the, the reading assessment addresses these features. It says purpose, complexity, predictor and prior knowledge. Prediction meaning guessing what's happening. Guess, remember the word guess. We call it inferencing, right? Then critical reading and text analysis. Can you see critical reading is here? Now, this is Australian uh, uh, Council for Educational Research. I believe that you will understand I am touching something serious. It says critical reading and text analysis. The analysis word is brought in. It says comprehension strategies and other things. I thought, right, I got it. That's not ending. I wanted to find out how do we assess who can read what. And is this level, uh, Australian qualification framework level five. And then Australian core skills framework level three, four. What are they? There must be further refined criteria. So I did further research. What I did was I clicked here reading and then there was a document I did download. Here it is, right? So this document is telling how they assess readers to group into those categories. And here it is individual student report for profit, core skills profile for adults. It says learner can do what the list is here and if you cannot do that you are going down the the levels okay and I found this one which says here the reading level required for ACSL level 4 is but look can you look at that now some of you are doing certificate some of you are doing diploma higher diploma those who are doing certificate meaning level 4 level 4 it is 135 should be the score level five above 135 so where these numbers coming from it is getting from here okay there is a method of marking and getting it now that means the picture is bigger than we thought right so i thought right that's good information right okay and the next i thought there is another one coming up there is you know this vet vocational education training fee structure is going to be changed there are some requirements is it connecting you know you, you need to test waters and find out what's happening right so i wrote that also there remember i told you making inferences meaning guessing predicting that's the one it came from that australian council for educational research and that's what inferences right so under inferences there is a video clip please look at that one simple example is inferencing guessing if someone comes and sit next to me and looks very quite angry i might be thinking oh that person looks angry maybe someone has told her anything maybe there is a personal crisis maybe something is happening maybe that those are intelligent guesses right that's what you are doing when you're reading critically paragraph just read the getting the title you can write down this could be this you can write down in a piece of paper your guesses right and then you can see how far you are correct right that will help you to compare and find out whether your guesses were right or wrong have fun with that right that's one method so the other thing why we may we make inferences to reach conclusions like the one sat next to me angry to find out What's wrong, whether it's a sickness or whether something else, what's happening? Then take can take an action. That's the other purpose. Then 
we need to evaluate evaluate is a big word i'll give you this definition so evaluating looking advantages and disadvantages of the facts written okay whether to agree with the author or not right you don't need to be negative the idea is not to be negative but just take a step backward and think more and see why should i trust this can this be trusted if not what else should be there right that is in your head throughout right so you are evaluating now inferencing is making educated guesses once you make educated guesses you have to analyze like i said the person came and sat next to me looked angry and i was thinking what it could be in my head i have to analyze and come to a con analyze meaning breaking in, in we need to find out what analysis in my head it's breaking into pieces why how things could happen what's there and you know the, so those kind of questions are there but it's thinking in my brain throughout right so analysis critical.com is we are saying analysis refers to close careful or systematic examination but your study skills handout if you look at page 26 it says find the main ideas and show how they are related what their function and why they are important that's what you're supposed to use any educational organization will have their defined key terms right the, then how and why are related to investigations remember that right? how things happen why things happen you need to do something else to find data so analysis critical uh, reading.com says analysis is a process of investigating something by breaking it into parts for closer examination kind of testing right then inferencing to, to inferencing again you need evidence that means evidence should be collected through a process of analysis those are little big words right okay i still have to prove my case what I did was next I wanted to get into uh, critical readers from non-critical readers, but much more solid data, solid examples. So what I did, critical reader, non-critical reader is called passive reader, just passive reader, right? Waiting, empty vessels filling kind of. Active reader is a different one. So the first one is non-critical reader is mainly. Uh, focusing on facts in the text what's there that's all but critical reader can, can identify this is facts these are opinions opinions meaning somebody's belief conclusion or judgment number two is the non-critical reader passive reader accept anything blind acceptance without examination critical reader is opposite examining everything number three for Passive reader, non critical reader is just remembering, that's rote learning style, right? Remembering all the facts. But what critical reader does is getting those facts, breaking into pieces, finding, joining with other facts, and then creating something new on their own. The fourth one is the critical, non critical reader telling the obvious, that means restating the same, there is no new knowledge, right? So, but the active reader is giving evidence of the text and further investigating some other material, bring them together, compare them together, and then reach conclusions. Now, the passive reader, meaning non critical reader, the meaning just reader, right? Some of my welcome emails have just reader, meaning the non critical reader, the passive reader, right? There is no reasoning, right? There is no guessing, no reasoning right there's not thinking beyond the text right there's no educated guesses but when it comes to uh, uh, active reader it's always looking at other uh, evidences and jotting down trail of reasoning in a logical sequence finally the passive reader or the non-critical reader cannot evaluate what was read evaluation right but the active reader is that can evaluate now we need to know what's the word evaluate to get into evaluate i'm going to bring you here student study skills handout and quickly go to page 26 this says evaluation it has all keywords evaluate make an appraisal of the worth of something 
give an opinion of leading practitioners in the field of the truth or importance of the concept. Include the advantages and disadvantages. You may also include your opinion. And that's what you need to follow for evaluation. There is no such thing when it comes to passive reader or non-critical reader. Now you need to ask from yourself which category you belong to. Am I in the group of non-critical reader or am I a critical reader? It doesn't matter, you should be honest with you. If you are a non-critical reader, no problem. At least you identified that. Now we need to find out how you are going to jump from this group to the other group. Okay, that's it. Let's see how it is. Now, some of these are, you know, some of the subjects, project management, resource management. We have these workbooks and uh, learning unit profile. They have this performance grading. Just got one example. Performance grading says here, material straight from the internet or quoted from another publication is not proof of understanding. If you copy and paste, meaning not your understanding. Why? The brain did not process. It must be in the student's own words and the student must be able to discuss any aspect of the writing to display understanding. Discuss meaning. Analyze breaking into pieces and pieces and bringing other academics opinion and telling whether the, 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 the reader you are going to believe or not where you stand. That's tough. Now I told you I need to bring you to the Bloom's taxonomy. Cognitive reading, reading, you know what reading. Critical reading meaning more actively involved. But cognitive meaning, the process of the mind is called cognition. Cognitive meaning how brain is processing. When you read, brain is processing these levels. The first one is just remember and then understand. This is common for non-critical reader or the passive reader, right? Or just reader. Then the next four levels are for, mainly for, active reader or the critical reader. See what's happening here, okay? Right, now, if you look at these ones, remember AQ level, Australian Qualification Framework Level 5, they were talking judgment. Can you see judgment here? The judgment comes under evaluation, right? So that means level 5. So 4, 5, 6 here are called higher order thinking skills. And one, two, three are called low order thinking skills, okay? Yes, active reader is belong to five, four, but have again starting from one, two, three and going ahead, right? Can go further. Right, so I came back to where I was. Now the next one I got was, I got five, four, three, two. These sons are elements of critical reading. Then I found one and half, one and half, you know, first level and the second level half belong to non-critical reading. <clears throat> then I found level four and five is part of critical thinking. I'm not going to address here, but wrote. <clears throat> okay, so then the next one was, how do we find out what are the critical reading strategies? Because if you are in that wrong group, you need to jump onto the other group. So one is this Cotterell, Stella Cotterell's uh, <coughs> study skills handout. I generally give this with my welcome email. So if I click it here, you will find it. This is, this, this, this elements are there. It says, are you doing this, right? And you can see my notes here. These are very important. Chart the main ideas, read interactively, use mind mapping, right? And it says, do you pay attention to these, right? And here it is. It says, I read that three times and I don't remember a word. This is very true, right? So I wrote my notes there. This is digital, but writing notes. Then I said, do you really think of these areas? Ask depth questions, right? So these are... These are helpful hints, strategies, right, for to develop crit, uh, critical reading among you. Then what I did was self-evaluation. I sent this to students, asked them to be honest and evaluate. This is one example from a student. Self-evaluation, telling the truth. It says, can you see what was written? Ticks are the student response. 
how exactly what you are, know, know exactly what you are looking for, says I try both. And he said, use reading list selectively. Put text where necessary. Do I know what I need to read? Says no. Right? It's a genuine opinion. No, not without knowing what the assessment is. Right? Have I considered each source? Put a tick here. Right? Here, select relevant parts of the book. Do I browse the book quickly? Tick. Do I use the content page index, the heading, subheadings? Not the index. Never thought of that. Do I identify which part of which chapters to read? No. Can you see that? It's an honest opinion. So it has, this is called self-evaluation, right? And it says here, here, read interactively. Do I think about what I'm reading? Sometimes, depend on how interesting it is. Then it says, do I make notes of the important points and ideas triggered by what I read? No. It says, do I map out ideas so that I can see how everything fits together? No. So like that, you need to evaluate yourself. That's called self-evaluation tool. And then what happens is, I'll send you the self-evaluation tool. Whenever you put a no, you need to do it because the purpose is you want to jump into active reader column, right? But still, I haven't argued my case, right? I'm still in the process. So there are four. And you could see that these comments made by a student. Ask in-depth questions. Here it is. What points in the... Is the writer making? No. Why is this detail relevant? Yes, yes. Is the writer trying to answer a particular question? No. So these are, you know, individual opinions. So I'm going to close it there. That's one method, okay? Right, now paying attention to the little steps involved. Let's see what's happening there. This is from a website, you can see that, right? Graduate Resource Center, Critical Reading Strategies. It says preview. Reread, read it again and again. Annotate, write little notes. Contextualize within the context, try to find it, immerse in the context, and then connect with the pieces. Ask questions of what, why do I read? What's happening? What's happening? Why is it stated there? Then reflect on that. Reflection meaning write your own summary. Right? Reflect, reflection. Reflection could be comparison, similarities, differences, finally summarizing, evaluating is finding whether the author is making a point, whether it is, uh, it is, it is one side is advantages or other side is disadvantages, comparing. These are little elements. Okay? Now, there is another one here. Um, this is from the Princeton Education. I've got this resource what it says is this is a university world-class university they are also considering critical reading as an important okay and it says strategies these are ask me so i'll send you these ask yourself reading questions identify and define unfamiliar terms it's asking you the same thing that the stella quaterel says right now i have two evidences stella quaterel's textbook and this is from a university there are a couple of universities involved Finally, it says simple mind map, simple diagrams. And then it says, look at this chain. It says reading argumentative structure, open specific example, tell to generalize, diagnose, then come up with a solution, then look at what other issues are there, and finally come to a conclusion. Okay, so that is present. So that's just a great source. Now, mind mapping is a technique, right? Remember I told you mind mapping, what I did, right? So this was, this mind mapping we saw earlier. So this is digital mind mapping, okay? That's fine. Now, the next one is, it's, I wrote this before doing it in digitally. When you get ideas, you have to write it. You can't go to a, a, a computer and draw that. I got a piece of paper, got a pencil, and wrote all the things in my, from my head, right? So that is manual mapping, manual mind mapping. And you can use, there are websites, you can draw this beautiful mind map. But the purpose is not to show this beauty to anybody, for our brain to think and connect with reading material. Okay, so for me, it's not important to go to a website and coming up with a beautiful mind map. I want to come up with quality information which has a meaning. Now, this is another picture 
I told you where the resource, the resource I uh, took this, it says critical reading strategies, visualize, clarify, question, predict, connect, evaluate. That's called active reading. Remember, non-active readers, they don't do that. Non-active or passive readers, they don't do. They read and they end up with saying, I don't understand. So the next one is this. When you read, make sure you keep a note. Why do you keep a note? Because, because remember the Bloom's taxonomy got six levels, the thinking skills. This is the thinking wheel. This is the cognitive processing. That's mental processing. The levels of mental processing on top of the mountain is creating creating is a huge it's a much more valuable skill right so i put it there now this ask these questions i got it from pinterest this is ask yourself i can retell the story telling the same that's what non-critical reader is doing the passive reader then the number the next picture is where my mouse is i can provide text evidence to support answers when asked Somebody need to ask. That's not a good habit, right? So that is also not really commendable. So the next level is, you know, from the right side, the three levels are mainly for diploma students, AQM level five. Looks look the middle diagram. I can use text evidence to support my answer against an alternative answer. That means looking at one specific example and then telling what is possible that's not a very good thing get into the fourth one i can spontaneously use text evidence to support my answer you can do it throughout fantastic last one i can explain how text evidence supports is uh, supports my idea and notice when it does not that's the best so i want you wherever you start you climb up the ladder slowly and you reach there okay so that is citing why is citing necessary because when at some point you need to right so therefore you need to say who said what and where you got it if not the reader won't believe you cannot convince your reader right so i got one two three four five four and five are the best for level five diplomas right so i wrote here non-critical reader that's it now i this word cloud is given to you put a tick now, all these elements are related to critical reading. Self as CR stands for critical reading, self assessment. Put a tick. If you do this in when you read, every time when you get it, you do that because it's not throughout. You know, sometimes you read. You start this subject. Okay. First two days I read, or first week. Have I done this, these things? Find out which area you find difficult. Let me know. Let me help you. Right? That's how we are going to proceed. So still I have to prove my case. This is where I'm bringing research findings. There's one research, it says here, there is no evidence, no, no evidence between the outcome of critical reading of printed matter and critical reading of digital matter. There is no, this is 2014, the, the person's uh, surname is used, right? To support my argument. This. A set of slides got list of references to show what I read. Some of them, not all, because I read more than written here. Then medical science research is very interesting because why I want to bring the medical science research information is reading is related to processing power of the brain. So that means we need to look what's happening in the brain. So this research, 2011, it's scientific research, very detailed. It says brain synapses. We need to know what brain synapses are. So I did link this to a website. So if you look at this picture, you will find in our brain, there are a lot of nerves. All these nerves are made up of the, the, the basic unit we call neuron. These neurons, you cannot go to a shop and buy even if you pay coin of a bucket of gold and ask can i have neurons you can't buy these are live cells you can't buy neurons and put in your head to improve your critical reading ability it's not going to happen now this this nerve you know the 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 the, the, last, you know, the, the small thread like nerves are made up of billions of these units called neurons each unit has a little ending here, right? We call it a synapse. 
the experiments this says when you learn a new skill what happens is lots of neurons are dying and some new neurons are formed synthesized right and they can pass the information so that's what's happening i'll give you this link please read so i am bringing scientific evidence to prove this from medical science research which says functions of brain synapses right learning is related to feed forward inhibitory connectivity a little bit heavy vocabulary but it is needed for memory precision meaning accurately remember that is required right and that's what that research says so now you can find it this critical reading is directly involved with your brain okay and you can't buy it from a shop now the next one is balancing freedom and autonomy this is australian research it it clearly says mare and michel what it says is uh, freedom and autonomy they they say these are done using tafe campuses regional towns in new south new south wales they were using level 1 2 and 3 Uh, students uh, to teach certain programs and then they found that freedom and autonomy is one of the key features of uh, tertiary and uh, further education but it seems a lot of individuals are misusing it right the next one is uh, this research it says this is again this is trees this is australian research what it says is doing activities and exercises are enhancing understanding right also it says passive listening it clearly says hearing and listening are different listening two types passive listening active listening so active listening again similar to active reading right making sense you know that that, that means interacting with the material more than the passive listener fantastic that's another research then the research continues the other one is factors affecting on electronic reading it says this research 2014 it says sometimes there are these new product like kindle amazon introduced kindle which will be 200 dollars kind of you can buy that can help some people to read more than normal sometimes if you are in a group and you all are reading you will you know you will be stimulated to read so that means social influence a new product pricing and this kind of things have an impact on e reading then another research it says this uh, media richness is contributing to e book read that is whether the convenience compatibility compatibility you know that different platforms operating systems right so media richness meaning reading information animation video audio all of those things not just text right so th that has a meaning then another research is done by the kent university they have opened a reading clinic for undergraduates can you see where i am i brought a lot of valid research and they are latest this kent reading clinic is 2015 publication okay so now i'm going to prove my argument and saying nowhere it says critical reading is completely irrelevant people no one should think of that and in fact non critical readers reading is the best there is nowhere it says okay but you can do a research and you can prove me the day you prove i'm ready to accept you can challenge me no problem and you're welcome now i put my references here you can see the details pages okay some of them not all this is in small writing because there are quite a lot all of them are research papers i have contacted my son to get it from the university right these are from coming from uh, emerald insight they are fantastic research papers now the question time right so i'm going to uh, present this pres uh, this this set of slides to the staff and to get a feedback okay so that's why but i was i initially it was set to improve your critical reading ability okay now so questions are whirling and whirling that's the nature of questions okay right now what i wanted to say here is you can and i believe i convince you that 
critical reading is such important. Why? To make decisions at work and in personal life. Also, to improve your argument, you know, to, you know the, the remove errors in arguments, and also do a higher degree in the future.